kahadas rago nath patita pavan kahamora bata yoga Kaha Kaviraj Kaha Mora Bhata Yoga Kaha Kaviraj Eka Kale Kota Jela Goranatara Eka Kale Kota Jela Goranatara Asane kuti bonata anale pashi bo Asane kuti bonata Anale Pashibo Goranga Kunera Nidi Kota Chile Pabo Goranga Gunera Nidi Kota Chile Pabo Se Saba Sankira Sange Ye kailo bilas Se sabha sanghira sanghe Ye kailo bilas Se sangha na paya kande naratam odhas. Se sangha na paya kande Naratamadas Sangha 
So today is thank you. Today is the disappearance day of Srivas Pandit. So we're going to speak be nice to speak on the pastimes of Srivas. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda So although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared at the Yoga Peet, where the home of Jagannath Mishra was, the bulk of his uh, pastimes while he was in the youth and Grihastha ashram took place not so much in his own home but in the home of Srivas Pandit. It was in the home of Srivas Pandit the Lord was to exhibit or was in the home of Srivas Pandit, the Lord inaugurated the Sankirtan. After taking his initiation in Gaya and then coming back to Mayapur, he wanted to have everyday Kirtan. Not every day but every night. He thought, why waste time sleeping? Have Kirtan every night. And so the devotees were happy to come and meet. That is the symptom of bhava. You don't waste time. Don't waste time sleeping. Just like Nectar of Devotion tells about the one lady who danced the whole night and awakened bhava for Krishna. So, I don't know how many nights you need to do it to get bhava, but one night wouldn't be enough. So, Lord Chaitanya anyway was having his kirtan there in the home of Srivas Pandit and the devotees were enjoying every day, every evening there, wonderful pastimes, wonderful kirtan in the home of Srivas. But, Lord Chaitanya also had Lord Nityananda come there and Lord Nityananda developed very intimate relationship with Srivas Pandit and his good wife Malini. Srivas Pandit lived there in his home along with his brothers. I think there were four brothers, right? Ramai and Srivas and I don't know the names of the other two. Huh? Sripati? Srinidhi? Really? Good. Okay, Sripati, Srinidhi. Four brothers. A joint family, right? Nice system. All living together and Lord Nityananda is coming there and Lord Nityananda had a very special relationship with Srivas Pandit and his wife Malini that he was like their son. However, Lord Nityananda is a, he has avadut, nature. Just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, you can read about Lord Rishavdev, how Lord Rishavdev, after he retired and put Bharat on the throne, Lord Rishavdev became avadut. And people were really shocked. They were really they were really, they really insulted him and they beat him and did so many things to him. 
But he didn't, you know, Rishabdev didn't worry. So Lord Nityananda was behaving also like Avadut there in the home of uh, Srivas and Malini because he saw them like his mother and father in the spiritual world. Of course, Srivas Pandit, they, we're told he's an expansion of Narada Muni. So I don't quite understand how the relationship works that Lord Nityananda sees Srivas Pandit and Malini like his mother and father. But anyway, certainly Malini was like mother for him. And sometimes Lord Nityananda would take his clothes off and just like a child, be like a child. So Lord Chaitanya came to Srivas and he said to Srivas, he said, you know, Srivas, you're a respected brahmana in the community. They're all brahmanas, Gadarhar Pandits, brahmana, Advaita Acharya Hom, they're also brahmana, Jagannath Mishra, brahmans. So, Srivas family, all brahmans, and they were respected people in the community. But Lord Nityananda, they didn't know about his origin. He's a little bit mysterious, you know. Who is he? Where does he come from? He's not from Mayapur. He's from, not from Navadweep even. He's from Radhadesh. We don't know his origin. Actually, father was Harai Pandit. But mother was Padmavati from the daughter of a Kshatriya, daughter of a ruler. So do they keep their Brahmin caste when it's like that, mixed marriage? I think, maybe. Anyway, a little bit unusual. So uh, Lord Nityananda and his behavior is also unusual, questionable. So Lord Chaitanya said to Srivas, are you sure you want to have this Nityananda in your home? Are you willing to accept him and give him shelter like this? He's living in your home, taking his meals there. He's staying there like one of your family members. Are you okay with this? Are you willing to accept him like this? And Srivas Pandit said to Lord Chaitanya, oh my dear Lord, you're testing me. You know I could never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Even if Lord Nityananda marries a Muslim girl, or even, even if I see him coming out of a liquor shop, still I can never give up the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased to see the staunch faith that Srivas had in the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. And Lord Chaitanya gave benediction. He said, even if Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, goes hungry, he said, your home will never know any poverty. Even if the goddess of fortune has to go begging, your home will have no poverty. Srivasi's family, they didn't, they didn't go to factory. They didn't have jobs. They were brahmanas. They just depended on the grace of Krishna. Whatever came to them by the grace of Krishna, they accepted. And if nothing came, they didn't worry about it. But there was no problem. However, sometimes there were problems because of the kasi because they were having the kirtan in the home of Srivas. So uh, the, the Kasi were threatening. And the, the trouble was really coming from the non-devotional Brahmins, the smarter Brahmins who didn't join in the kirtan. They were complaining. They make so much noise, disturbing us. The whole night, don't they ever sleep? The whole night they have to do this chanting, so loud they have to chant. 
Why they have to chant so loud, so much noise? So they were saying, we're going to tell the Kasi. The Kasi will send his military here. You'll all be arrested. You have to go to jail. So Srivas heard the threats of these brahmanas and he was a little worried what to do. Srivas worshipped Lord Nishingadev, right? Janani Vas Prabhu, is that right? Srivas, Srivas Pandit wor worshipped Nishingadev deity? Yeah? Or Shaligram, Shaligram is more. Okay. So anyway, uh, he was a, Srivas was a little afraid to even open the door because he thought, he didn't know who's coming. Maybe the Kazi men are coming, will all be arrested, have to go to jail. So when Lord Chaitanya heard about how Srivas was a little worried and fearful what might happen, then Lord Chaitanya came there and spoke to him and told him that, Srivas, you don't have to worry. He said, I am the Supreme Lord, I am the Supreme Controller. If the Kazi comes here and arrests you, it will be my will. But even if they do it independently, without my desire, he said, if they arrest you, he said, I will come there. I will be the first to come there and I will appear in the court and I will call the king and I will tell the king, bring all your Kazis, bring all your mullahs and bring all the animals, bring the mad elephant bring the horses and the donkeys and the birds, bring all these animals, let them come here and I will ask your mullahs and your kasis, recite your scriptures, make these animals cry in ecstasy of love for God. Can you do it? And if you can, if, when they cannot do it, then I will show them the strength of our scriptures. I will, I myself can make them all cry. I can make them all chant the holy name of the Lord in ecstasy. So Srivas was listening and Lord Chaitanya could understand maybe Srivas is doubting my words. Maybe he thinks it's not really possible. So at that time Srivas Pandit's uh, niece Narayani was a young girl at the time. She was about four years old. And Lord Chaitanya said to her, Narayani, chant the holy name of Krishna and cry. I want to see you chant the name of the Lord and cry in ecstasy. And that is exactly what happened. Little four-year-old Narayani became overwhelmed in love for the Lord. She chanted the holy name, she rolled on the ground, and she, set, she shed tears, flooding the floor with her tears. So, Narayani, of course, was a very special girl. She was known to have eaten the remnants from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya would chew beetle and he would sometimes take the beetle and give to Narayani. So she was a very, very special girl and later on she grew up and was married and her son became Vyasadeva for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Her son was Vrindavan Das Thakur who wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat and who was a disciple, the last disciple of Lord Nityananda. So just understand some of the different family members there in the home of Srivas Pandit. The people like little girls like Narayani. They were so fortunate 
because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is coming in their home, they could get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Just like Lord Chaitanya went to Sri Rangam and he got Gopal Bhat, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami from there. And he went to, when he, even before he took sannyas, he went to Bangladesh and he met Tapanamishra. And Tapanamishra had a son, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. And he, so like that, different children, we cannot understand. You know, young children, the devotee shows some affection, gives some mercy to the young child. We don't know in the future how that child is going to grow up and can become a very wonderful devotee. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada also gave mercy to children. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, I heard also, he used to keep sweets in his pocket and he would go and give them to the children and the village children. So Lord Chaitanya showed that kind of affection also for the children. So Srivas Pandit's home, there was also one maidservant and she had the job to bring Ganga water to the home. She was make, to make sure there was always a good supply of Ganga water. And sometimes Lord Chaitanya would also take his bath in the courtyard of Srivas Pandit. So when Lord, Chait and when Lord Chaitanya sat on the throne and they were on the Vishnu altar and he wanted everybody, they wanted, he wanted Abhishek, at that time they had to bring a lot of water. And the whole service was done by this one lady whose name was Duki. When Lord Chaitanya saw all the pots of water, Lord Chaitanya was very pleased. And he asked, who has done this? And they told him, oh, this is a maidservant. Her name's Duki. Lord Chaitanya said, someone who does such a nice service, their name should be Suki, not Duki. So Lord Chaitanya not only changed her name, but he also made her very blissful, spiritually blissful, full of spiritual bliss. So that's a good fortune, being in the home of Srivas Pandit. Even the insects in the, in the home of Srivas Pandit are fortunate. One time, Malini, Mother Malini was cleaning the Arctic paraphernalia of Lord, of her, her husband, of Srivas Pandit. And at that time a crow came and took one of the little katoris, katori, little pots, you know, that we serve food into the deities. So the crow took off, took away the katori. And Malini cried because she thought, oh, my husband will get angry. My husband will chastise me for being careless to let the crow steal it. And so when Lord Nityananda came and saw Mother Malini crying like this, he found out what was wrong and he ordered the crow, you bring back that katori right now. And the crow flew away, came back with the katori and brought it to the feet of Malini. And so this is Lord Nityananda performing his pastimes also there in the home of Srivas Pandit. So many wonderful pastimes took place there. Lord, Chait uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu liked to chant and dance in ecstasy. And as I said, they would chant the whole night. But it happened that one day in the course, while the kirtan was going on, one of the sons of Srivas Pandit left the body. And when the child died, then the, some of the ladies who were taking care of the child, they also cried out of affection for the departed soul. 
But Srivas Pandit, who was there at the time, he chastised them and told them, Don't cry. Don't cry. Lord Chaitanya is doing kirtan. Don't disturb the kirtan. So the kirtan went on. The ladies somehow controlled their crying. And Lord Chaitanya chanted and chanted until the morning came. And when the morning came, then Lord Chaitanya turned to Srivas and said, I feel that something inauspicious has taken place here. Has something inauspicious happened here? Kindly tell me the situation. So at that time, Srivas Pandit told Lord Chaitanya that at the beginning of the night, one of my sons was having a fever and he departed from the world. When Lord Chaitanya heard this, Lord Chaitanya cried. Lord Chaitanya himself cried that Srivas, he said to Srivas that your son left the body and you did not tell me, you did not tell us. And Srivas said, my Lord, I did not want to disturb your kirtan. Kirtan is your life. I did not want to disturb your activities. So Lord Chaitanya was requested to, he, he, Lord Chaitanya requested Srivas, take me to this body of your son. And Lord Chaitanya went there and he placed his hand on the chest of the boy and said, why are you leaving this house? You've taken birth here in this house. Why are you leaving now? So at that time, the child came back to life and he sat up and he spoke to all the people there, to Srivas and the ladies, his mother and the other ladies in the house. And the child spoke philosophy to them. He told them that by the will of providence, I have taken my birth in this home and the time which was allotted for me to be in this home is now expired. So by the will of providence, I'm leaving and I will go take birth some other place. You should understand that these relationships like mother and brother, they are all very temporary and illusory. They're not reality. We should understand the actual truth that we're all, we all have an eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. So the child pacified the minds of all the members of the family and hearing these words from the departed child, they were all pacified, they stopped grieving, they could understand the actual truth. So Srivas Pandit is Narada Muni. On one occasion, well, of course he would go to Jagannath Puri every year. He would go with all the devotees after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas. Then he would come there to Jagannath Puri. Actually, they say after Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, then Srivas left Mayapur. They went to live. Which place did they go? Where did they go and live? After Mayapur? Yeah, Sridhar. Srivas. Oh, Srihat. They went to Srihat. Where? Near to Calcutta. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's? Oh. So Srivas and his family, they all moved to Sri Hat, which Jananivas Prabhu says is near to Calcutta, and it's also the home of Lord Chaitanya's guru. 
ಈಶ್ವರಪುರಿ devotees take some dust from there from the ah okay so janani vas prabhu is recounting very nice pastime which takes place there at shri hart they said because this was the birthplace of the guru of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu so he would take some dust and take it and keep it in his cloth and he'd eat a little every day so since that time all the devotees who go there they also do the same thing they take some of the dirt so now there's a pakor there they've taken so much of the earth away it's made a big hole in the ground it's become a pakor a lake a little lake so that's lord chaitanya respecting the birthplace of his guru uh so shrivas still after taking lord chaitanya took sanyas went to puri and shrivas had moved but still he would go to puri for the rati atra and there's an interesting conversation narrated in the chaitanya charitamrita because shrivas pandit is in the mood of narada muni and narada muni is a vaikuntha man so when he sees mother lakshmi come out with her army with her soldiers to arrest to arrest lord jagannath and all of his associates then shrivas pandit saying oh look at the opulence of mother lakshmi just look how powerful look how opulent she is and uh, swarup damodar goswami who who in his spiritual body is the gopi lalita he says to shrivas oh shrivas you don't know the opulence of vrindavan he said you think this by you think lakshmi is opulent you think her her kingdom is opulent you have not seen the opulence of vrindavan in vrindavan every cow is a kamadenu cow every tree is a kalpa briksha tree and every speck of dust is chintamani your goddess of fortune cannot begin to compare to the opulence of vrindavan like this they were talking to each other so shrivas pandit narada muni narada muni loves to chant the holy name so shrivas his home was a very appropriate place to inaugurate the sankirtan movement of course during the time of chi chaitanya mahaprabhu when he was present in mayapur initially the kirtans in shrivas pandit's home were private affairs they did not allow the non devotees or the outsiders to come but people could hear and some people were curious and they wanted to come but lord chaitanya was very careful he wanted to keep the mood very pure just like i saw this morning at mongol arti this morning it was so powerful so many of the brahmacharis were there chanting and dancing the spiritual energy was really very great you know usually you get so many other people come when the public when the temple was open to the public there's so many public there it's not quite so ecstatic but this morning all the devotees the the, the real 
brahmacharis, the devotees are there, and so it's very powerful and pure. So Lord Chaitanya liked to have kirtan in that kind of atmosphere with the devotees, with all of his associates. And they would dance wonderfully. Said Lord Chaitanya could dance. Sometimes his feet would touch his head. We cannot imagine how he did it, but somehow. He would jump very high and crash to the ground. And wonderful kirtans. People wanted to come. One time even, there was a, the brahmachari who only drank milk and fruits. He wouldn't take any cooked food. Very renounced. He was thinking, I'm very renounced because I don't eat any cooked food. I only live on milk and fruit. And he was a strict brahmachari as well. So he was begging Srivas, Oh, please, let me see the kirtan, please. So Srivas at first was saying, No, 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 no. But because the, the brahmachari again and again he requested, so then Srivas thought, Well, he's a good brahmachari, he's very strict, and maybe if I hide him behind the curtain, it will be okay. So he put him behind the kirtan, behind the curtain and Lord Chaitanya came and all the devotees came and they started the kirtan but after a while Lord Chaitanya said something is wrong something is wrong I'm not feeling the same ecstasy here today something is wrong is there somebody here who should not be here and at that time the brahmachari came out and said well well, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to see the kirtan, you know. I, uh, please, you know, try to understand, you know, I'm a brahmachari and I only live on milk and fruits. I don't take any cooked food. And Lord Chaitanya looked at him with disgust. Do you think you can get love of Krishna just by living on milk and fruit? Get this milk drinker, fruit eater out of here. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was not impressed. Uh, but then the, the, the brahmachari fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and begged forgiveness. And Lord Chaitanya took compassion on him, seeing his genuine humility and desire to be forgiven. Lord Chaitanya instructed him, telling him, don't you think that you can get love of God just by doing that kind of austerity. That is not how you get love of God. You have to develop your devotion for the Lord. You're not going to get love of God just by living on milk and fruits. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya instructed that brahmachari for his own good to understand what is the real goal of life. We have to develop love and love of God. To, get to, to develop love of God, we must cultivate the mood of devotion through the path of bhakti. So another person who tried to get into the kirtan was the mother-in-law of Srivas Pandit, right? And she was hiding she also wanted to see the kirtan. She was hiding. But again, Lord Chaitanya said, something is wrong. I'm not feeling ecstasy. There's somebody here. And then Srivas is looking around and he found his mother-in-law and took her by the hair, brought her out. Mother-in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> can give a lot of trouble for some people. Mm. So he got her out anyway, he didn't let her see the kirtan. But Srivas Pandit gave mercy. He said there was one Muslim tailor near to the home of Srivas Pandit. And that Muslim tailor, because he was doing some service for Srivas, he, he also got love of God, right? He was also blessed. 
with Krishna Prem. So, just having even a connection to that family of Srivas Pandit gives so much good fortune, makes one's life so auspicious. We just cannot begin to appreciate. Of course, it was in the home of Srivas Pandit where the Kazi actually came and broke the Madanga. The Kazi had come there, and so when Srivas was afraid, I was telling earlier how Srivas was afraid of the Kazi, they'd actually come there and threatened him. So, you know, when they've been before, then it's worse, right? You're always thinking, oh, they're coming again, they're coming again. <laughs> so sometimes we're in these situations, you know, where you go places where it's illegal to do kirtan, and the police come sometimes. And they don't do it again. You have to come again. You know, you being big, so you're always really worried. You know, though they're coming again, because the Chan Kazi had come. They'd broken the Madanga, and they threatened, "We're going to make you all Mohammedans. We'll change your, you'll lose your caste." So very big problem, very dangerous. But Srivas is fortunate that he has Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there to give him faith. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also had his problems. His mother sometimes, Mother Sachi, you know mothers are a problem. Trying to keep mothers happy is not very easy. So Mother Sachi, she was worried about her son because Lord Chaitanya was in ecstasy. Was after he came back from Gaya and then Kanai Natsala and he had some mystical experience with Lord Krishna at Kanai Natsala, then came back to Mayapur, then he could not teach anymore. He only wanted to speak about Krishna and he was in so much ecstasy. Mother Sachi asked people what to do. Some people said, oh, pour the water from a coconut on his head to cool his brain. Something like that, you know, <laughs> some kind of oil massage to cool the brain. Or another time Mother Sachi and Srivas come to the home and see what's wrong with my son. So Srivas came to the home and he saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and when he saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he knew immediately what was wrong with Lord Chaitanya. So he said to Mother Sachi, he said, I wish I had his disease. If I could have his disease then my life is successful. Because Lord Chaitanya was experiencing Krishna Prem he was in ecstatic love for the Lord, feeling separation of the Lord. And Srivast could understand the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, your son is not crazy. These other people may be crazy, but your son, he is the most sane person. His problem is not really a problem. He has achieved the goal of life. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased with Srivas, that Srivas could understand the actual nature of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he could explain to Mother Sachi what is the actual situation. Another pastime which Srivas was involved in was with Devananda Pandit. The Devananda Pandit was over in Kaladweep and he was having a Bhagavat teaching Srimad Bhagavatam. He was having classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and he had many students. Devananda Pandit was quite respected as a Pandit and he had many students studying Bhagavatam from him. But he was not trained in the devotional mellows and he did not understand the symptoms of ecstatic love. So Srivas, 
was desiring to hear Srimad Bhagavatam because at this time there was not much, there were no books, so it was very difficult to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Only a few brahmanas were very fortunate to have copies of the Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, to get a copy you had to write it out yourself on leaves. So Srivas, somehow he went there to, to Devananda Pandits and he sat there and he heard them speaking Srimad Bhagavatam. And although Devananda Pandit was not actually devotional at the time, Srivas, just by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, he became ecstatic and symptoms of ecstasy awoke, awoke in his body. Different transformations of love for Krishna came about just by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. However, the other students did not understand what was taking place. And they roughly picked up Srivas and brought him out from the assembly. And Devananda Pandit did not stop them. They were his students and he did not do anything to stop them. So Devananda Pandit got reaction for this. Take reactions on behalf of the disciples. Because Srivas is a pure devotee. And they had not understood his ecstasy. So Devananda Pandit was Punished for that, got reaction. Eventually, however, he managed to get forgiven for his offense. He got forgiven because Vakrishwara Pandit was doing kirtan and Devananda Pandit took time to control the crowds because Vakrishwara Pandit would do kirtan for a very long time and would attract many people. We know in India, not very difficult to attract a crowd. So you go out there, you do kirtan, many people come around. And so Devananda Pandit kept the people back so that they did not disturb his kirtan, that he could go on with the kirtan. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased when he saw Devananda Pandit do that. Initially, Devananda Pandit had approached Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for blessings. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, No, I'm not going to give you any blessing. You're an offender of pure devotees. And Devananda Pandit did not understand what he had done. So then it was only when Devananda Pandit gave, gave service to Vakrishwara Pandit during his kirtan, then Lord Chaitanya told him, that you have to go to Srivas Pandit and get forgiven for your offense. So Devananda Pandit went to Srivas and Srivas of course immediately said, no, 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 I, I, it's my, my, my fault, not your fault, you're offenseless. Dev, Srivas did not have any grudge, any bad feelings towards him. So in this way, Srivas shows his great mercy on devotees, wonderful Vaishnava. So today is the disappearance day, Srivas Pandit. We pray to Srivas that we can also develop taste for kirtan, that we can also chant and dance in ecstasy in our homes, that we will allow our homes to become like your home, invite all the devotees and have kirtans. And even if our son dies, we pray that we can take the shelter of the holy name and understand the plan of the Lord. Okay, Srivas Pandit Ki. Comments? Questions? Doubts? Errors? One question. 
From Kalavati Gopika Devi Dasi, obeisances to Guru's lotus feet. I want to know, Narada Muni is a great devotee of the Lord. He is also a resident of Vaikuntha. And when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, he is Lord Chaitanya's associate. Why he didn't become the resident of Vrindavan? Why, why didn't he become a resident of Vrindavan? Well, Srivas Pandit, why didn't Narada Muni become a resident of Vrindavan? Or why didn't Narada Muni become a resident of Vrindavan? Well, he, he, comes, he would come to Vrindavan, but he would just come to accelerate the appearance of Lord Krishna. Just like when Kamsa, you know, when Kamsa, first of all, when, when Kamsa got the, that eighth child of Devaki, and when it, she rose up into the air as Durga, at that time then Kamsa became a bit fearful that, you know, we have to stop, not do anything. Then Narada Muni came to Kamsa and told him, no, you have to persecute. <laughs> You have to do more, you have to do more p p persecutions, you have to, we want to accelerate. Oh no, it wasn't Aitra, it was at the very beginning, when he first arrested Kamsa and Deva, uh, when Kamsa first arrested Vasudev and Devaki, before they had any children, he was going to let them go. But Narada Muni came and said, oh, be very careful. Because Narada Muni, he, he wants Lord Krishna, he knows Lord Krishna's coming. So he has to accelerate the pastimes. So he encourages Kamsa to do more sins because he knows if Kamsa does more sins, Krishna will come quicker. So Narada Muni is there. He's I heard from uh, Padma Lonesome Prabhu that <coughs> there is a form of Narada in, uh, as a cowboy and his potency he expands as Narada, Narada Muni. Oh, there's a form of Narada Muni as a cowherd boy. Yeah. And that form expands into Vaikuntha. Wherever the Lord is actually going, the Radha Muni goes with him, he expands with him. But the, he, I think the original form is a cowboy in Vrindavan. Narada Muni's original form is as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan. That's what I heard. You heard that? Okay. Behind Kusham Sarova, there's uh, Narada Kund also. Behind Kusham Sarova is Narada Kund. Yeah, you got Uddhava Kund near there, then there's a Narada Kund. Hmm. Okay. Became a got the body of a gopi. <laughs> There's a deity in that temple of that kund of a gopi, and she has her vena, and she's understood to be Naradi. They worship her as Naradi. Naradi, Naradi, the female Narada is called Naradi. So it's a gopi, the form of a gopi, and she's holding a veena, just as Narada Muni carries a veena, called Naradi. This is in, at Narada Kund. Yes, uh, back, back, back side of uh, Kusham Sarovara in Vraj. Okay. It's another pastime of Narada in Vrindavan, 
that um, Krishna told Radharani, be, be careful of Narada Muni, he's a, of what he says. He's a, he's a trick prankster. He likes to make jokes. Always don't take him seriously, otherwise you get into trouble sometimes. <clears throat> then um, Narada, <clears throat> There was, there was waiting, there was, there was, they were having a julam swing. And they were, they were waiting for Radharani. And the Radha Muni came and he told uh, Krishna, he said, I've, I've always had a strong desire. Was, was he there? Was Radharani? Was Krishna there? Yeah, Krishna was there. I always had a very strong desire to see you swinging with Lalita. I believe. And um, after a lot of coaxing, they said, oh, Lalita, you get on the swing. She said, no, I won't. Radharani's not here. No, it's okay. <clears throat> so then she got on the swing, but then Narada went to Radharani. Radha, you know what your Krishna's doing with your best friend, Lalita? They're enjoying without you. Then Radharani came and saw them on the swing. She got very upset. Full story. <clears throat> But uh, there was a big hullabaloo. <clears throat> then after, it, after the smoke cleared, then Krishna said, I told you, you don't take Narada Muni seriously. <laughs> he just likes to make, he, make, he likes to cause trouble sometimes. <laughs> He's a jokester. Hmm. Hello? There's the story of Lord Chaitanya asking Srivas, I never see you endeavoring to uh, get the necessities of life. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Maharaj, take okay. it from there. Okay, yeah. Because Srivas' family is a Brahm Brahmins, so Brahmins don't work. They worship the deities and they teach others to worship the deity. And they study the scriptures and they teach others the scriptures and they accept charity and they give charity. So, Srivast's family, we said four brothers, they're all married, have their families and there's children there, and they have servants. How do they maintain? How do they get food? And so, who, who was it Lord Chaitanya asked? Yes, yeah, Srivast said, how do you maintain? How do you manage to maintain? And Shiva said, well, he said, everything comes by the grace of the Lord. If after three days, if I don't get anything, if there's no food, and I'll throw myself in the Ganga. I'll just go and drown in the Ganga. If I, if the Lord, but every day the Lord provides, everything is provided by the grace of the Lord. There's no scarcity. But if, the, if there's nothing, what can I do? I just clap my hands three times and I'll throw in myself in the Ganga. Is that right? Have I got it? So, the, we're, you know, we can see the lockdown. Who could imagine so many days, no work, and still people are living. Still, you know, we don't see people dying, fortunately, <laughs> hopefully. And so many days, you know, nobody working, factories, everything. Some, the Yamuna has become so much nicer. The whole nature is being restored. So 500 years ago, people like that, they, you know, they, they did some work, but they didn't go off to factories, they didn't go to the other side of the planet to get jobs, to make a living, you yeah. know. Could live, come from, live nicely by the grace of Krishna, live off the land, so Srivas was a Brahmana, 
and he, they could get charity. Somehow people would come, give them. There were so many Brahmins, they didn't even beg, right? So Dhamma wasn't even begging. And somehow he was living. And Suklambar, he was begging broken rice. Lord Chaitanya said, so the best rice, the best he'd ever tasted. Kolaveka Sridhar, he was 50% of the income every day to worship Ganga. There was no stock market. <laughs> there was no buying shares and investments. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't remember the names. Do you remember the name? Yeah. Hari Chandan. Uh, Hari Chandan. Yeah, the king's servant at Ratiatra, you know, people all push and shove around. So the king came with his servant and the servant is pushing people out of the way. And uh, at, at one point he pushed Srivas and <laughs> the king wanted to see or Srivas wanted to see. And Srivas turned and slapped his face, right? <laughs> and Harichandan got a bit upset when Srivas turned and slapped him face. The, the servant got a bit angry, but the, the king told him, You're very fortunate, you've been touched you've been touched by the hand of Srivas Pandit. Yeah, they wanted to see the kirtan. And Srivas was also <laughs> watching the kirtan. So fortunate, touched by the hand of Srivas Pandit. Just like Lord Nijananda kicked Shivananda Sain. <laughs> Shivananda Sain also felt so fortunate. Okay. Any other pastimes? Any other questions? Okay. Janani Vaspur. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, wanted to do the drama, and he was in the play Lakshmi, and Haridas is playing the policeman, and they get in designated different positions, who's going to be what. And so Mahaprabhu was, he said, yeah, we'll do that drama, we'll do it at Chandrasekhar's house. And it, you, you can be, you know, you can choose who you like, you want to be, but you can be like this. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we get fine cloth and outfits and everything we, uh, to dress up. And... Uh, Uh, but only those with completely controlled senses can come. No one, who, no one without controlled senses. They can't. Behind, we will lock the doors. And I'd wait. The chariot was looking on the floor, looking down, and he said, when he heard that only self-realized persons can come, he said, I don't think I can come. And Shivas looked down also, and he said. I was thinking the same thing myself. 
I don't think I can come. <laughs> Mahaprabhu was smiling at them. He said, okay, I'll make you all yogis for one day, for the whole day you can become yogis with controlled senses. Shwastakoki. Yeah, then he appeared as Narad Muni in the drama. Also at the King Shuvana Shen, the palace, the other side of the Jalangi, Nityananda Prabhu and Srivas was there, and he was reciting the pastime of King Shuvana Shen and how he comes back as Buddhi Mantakan, I think, in, in Golila. But he was a very materialistic king, and so Narad Muni went to preach to him. <coughs> and then they, yeah, they, anyway, it turned out that the, uh, he's going to take. Uh, Narad Muni comes and he starts instructing the king. And then, and then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, and all the devotees, there is a Brahm Shamkatan is going on. And uh, Srivas is there. And he's, he, he's hearing this story about Narad Muni. He is Narad Muni. So he's in complete ecstasy. He's fainting on the floor. <laughs> They're having this uh, Prem Samkitan. The Sri, Sri Vas Thakur was, uh, was hearing his narration of that uh, of, of, uh, Narad, that Narad Muni was saying. So that was invoking all this. Prema that Lord, then Lord Chaitanya came and all the devotees came with the Maha Prema Shankirtan. That Srivas was in too much ecstasy there. He was remembering Narad Muni and everything. Did he have? Uh, yeah, Narad Muni is a spe very, very special character. He can go anywhere. He's, when Ram comes, he's with Ram. When Krishna comes, he's with Krishna. When Vishnu is coming, he's come. He incarnates with the world, where, <laughs> where all of the different incarnations of the Lord. And uh, even he comes to New York City, is it? <laughs> One, they were, I think they're having class in New York, and then suddenly someone walks in the temple with his shoes, shoes on, he's got his nice suit and everything, tie, a gentleman, walks in with his shoes on, looks around, he said, they're all malachas here, all malacha, and then he walks out. <laughs> Prabhupada said, that was Narad Muni. <laughs> 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 so, even Narad comes to help Iskon, he's the founder of Charya, of, of from the same Sampradaya as a, as we are, so he was ecstatic in seeing how Krishna consciousness is spreading even in New York, that he appeared there to have a look. A couple of occasions, I think Srila Prabhupada said that. So, Rad Muniki, Jay. Okay, Srivas Pandit Ki, Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Thank you, Provost.